Okay, there was some interest in my uh, Burning Man setup this year, 2017. So, uh, this is my, as you see, I like these ammo cans. They are plastic from Harbour Freight. They cost about five bucks. Uh, and this is one of my two power bricks, basically. So this is 64 amp hours of 4S LiPos with, um, what we got here? See, they're all wired in parallel here with the XT90s. This is a battery management board off eBay with a heat sink on it. Uh, that's pretty much all that goes inside. This is just another balance board that connects all the balance connections together. This goes to the BMS and it also goes to this external port, which is the DIN connector they put on here. It's an XT90 coming out here. Uh, this is a OLED display. You have to come pack it in to make it close properly, but you get the idea. So on the outside you've got XT90 with a little cap on it to keep the crap out. Works very nicely with a little PCB to make it mount properly. Survived pretty well. Um, kind of crappy duct tape solution, but you have to keep the. Uh, so this is where you connect the balance connector for the charger. So this is the charger, which is a very good charger. Uh, it's pretty expensive. I think it's about 400 bucks, but it's like pretty damn good. Um, and run, this runs off 24 volts, so I'm using two 12 volt server power supplies, each of which does 75 amps. Two separate. And you notice the uh, <laughs> liberal use of this is HEPA air filter which you really want to use. Anywhere the air goes in or out, you want to put, just, I just hot glue this stuff on. It's fantastic. It just keeps all the player out. So, they're widened series. One of these has been modified, DC float. This one's been modified so that the, the ground, the mains ground is disconnected from the output ground. That means you can run them in series without any problems. Stuck them together. This is a DPS 1200 FB, which is, there we go. That, which is Mr. Power Supply a very good power supply or two very good power supplies so I've got a 12 volt tapped out but this is the main 24 volt it goes to here goes to the charger again heavily covered in beard um, wherever air gets in now this is awesome this charger expensive but well worth it it can charge two packs simultaneously two separate outputs in, completely independent it can do 40 amps per output so I use XT90s for everything so this port is both charging and discharging the main power. So if you want to charge, plug in there, and you also plug, you see I made a little DIN connector. This is more pins than I need, but I was gonna have other stuff on there. And then plug in that. So you plug that in there, charger in there, and boom, charge it. And you can charge the shit out of it as well. So I used to use uh, old car fuses, but this is much better. This is a circuit breaker. It's a bit big, but on the other hand, it works really well. Um, OLED display, obviously it doesn't flicker like that. There you go. Um, this, these are about seven bucks, they're really good. Um, it uses about 10 milliamps, so whatever. Um, it could use some more refining, there's more stuff I'll do to it, but it's a pretty good start. Weighs about, I don't know, easily lift it with one hand, and that's basically a kilowatt hour. The batteries are about 300 bucks, not cheap but on the other hand, pretty awesome. Um, this and its brother live in the garden on non-flammable surface for fairly obvious reasons. Because uh, these are, you don't want to blow that up. Ooh. Anyway, so there's that. This gives about, as you see, it's about 16 point, freshly charged, so 16.2 volts per moment. Comes out here. Now it's currently, the, uh, this circuit breaker and the BMS both do um, overcurrent detection. So basically, it'll do about whatever, the, 40 amps, 60 amps or something, which seems reasonable. I mean, you could do an almost infinite amount of power out of that. I mean, hundreds of amps, no problem. But I don't need that, and it's scary. <laughs> so there's that. As you see, pretty compact. Now this is for the audio. Oh, by the way, this. So this is uh, if you want XT90 for everything. So if you want mains power, if you want 110 volts AC, this also has a. Again, you can't really see it under here, but there's two mains outlets plus a USB charger. Uh, this is just a regular Harbour Freight inverter, but I modified it, opened it up. Um, they're, they're pretty good, value. they work fine. You do have to, again, HEPA filter them, because the, these things die in a year if you don't, if the dust gets in. 
So, but this has been modified. Um, basically, I'll show them on separately, but essentially you change one resistor and you cut a diode. And so the diode is for the over voltage because otherwise it freaks out because the voltage is too high because 16 volts makes it freak out. It'll work fine, but it has a volt over voltage detect. It's meant for a car battery. So basically you cut that and then you also change your resistor value for the under voltage because you want this thing to cut off at like 12 volts because 12 volts is this thing is flat at this point. Now, the BMS itself does under voltage cutoff as well because everything goes to, it's basically a giant switch. Um, but, you know, you don't want to trust one thing here. <laughs> so, and also this thing starts beeping as well when it gets low. So when this, so basically the thing normally cuts off 10 volts and you basically mod, mod the resistor so it cuts over 12 volts and you get rid of over voltage. And then you can run it just beautifully off this thing and you get all the power you want. I mean, you can use it. Okay, so, bearing in mind setup part two. Right, um, that's power, charging, inverter if you want AC, which I usually don't. And this is the audio arm that I made. So this is, uh, again, the favorite arm I can. XT90 power in, this is just pack air output. Uh, speakers, the rest of it's just sealed up. So normally it's closed. This is kind of a space where it was all thrown together. Um, but essentially what you get is uh, audio in, five volt charging, and then, now I can't pull this all out because it's kind of wired up. There's wires in the back, wires in the back that connect through to these. So I'll see how far I can get it out. Yeah, kind of some of the way. There we go, anyway, you can see what's going on. So, um, inside here, on the outside, is a fan, which is coming through to here, which is now. Okay, so at the bottom, we've got this power acoustic thing, which is like under 20 bucks. Uh, you really want one of these because, so it's a car, you know, it's a little car, mini size EQ. Now, the reason you want one of these is because it's effectively an active crossover, right? So it gives you master volume, um, you can plug in here if you want to, although I have a separate, you can plug it straight in the front, but the reason that I have it coming out the back is I also have a, you can't see, oh, the fuse here as well, I've got a fuse. Um, there's, in there, there's a uh, audio isolation transformer, and the reason you want that is because often with a lot of devices, when you're charging them off this and also playing audio at the same time, then you get a ground loop due to the buck converter and the five volt charger thing, which sucks and you get all this horrible noise. So you put one of those on, which costs about three bucks in line, and then it'll go the way. Perfect solution. So this is a power acoustic crappy thing. The point is though that it has um, separate bass output, right? So it has a separate sub output, which you can tune. So you can do the crossover frequency and the, and the volume. And then this is, you know, an EQ for the main speaker output. So you've essentially got, uh, you've got four outputs, right? Well, three, but I mean, what the hell? So, I mean, the bass is mono, but... So then I'm using two separate um, stereo amps, each of which is 160 watts per channel. Uh, usefully has a fan built in as well. Now, these are run off... These will run at all sorts of voltages, but you want to run them off of high voltage, so I'm running off of 35 volts, which is the maximum voltage. And that's limited by the chip under here and also by these input caps as well, which are all 35 volt rated, so that's kind of your maximum. Um, and then for each one I've got a boost converter which goes from whatever to 35 volts and these are 250 watt, they're really cheap they're really, and also they're um, aluminium PCBs which is great so there's an, obviously there's a, I've got a little sticky pad a stand, which is a standoff between this, this conductive because this is a heat sink and it's aluminium so it conducts, it's conductive so therefore uh, sticky pads here to a standoffs from the caps but it's sitting on the caps but it works fine, they don't really weigh much um, and so they're both set to you know, maximum current and 35 volts from whatever comes in. So it doesn't really matter. You can do 12 volts or 15 volts or 24 volts or anything. It doesn't care, which is handy. Um, and then, of course, you've also got the, the, I mean, separately, you've got this little 5 volt buck converter, which is doing the USB power for the charging. So anyway, so the output of this, it has these on the front, but I didn't use them because they also have the audio inputs on these little JST connectors. Uh, this is a gain setting. I just got a maximum gain. Um, but the audio can come in on JSTs, which I'm doing here. So basically I just wired up a thing that goes directly to save space on the back. Um, that basically takes... So what I did is you've got, effectively out here, you've got uh, two base channels and two everything else. So 
basically to split the load basically I've got the bass coming in and I've got each one is doing one mid-range high and one bass and then one mid-range high and one bass exactly so it's four channel output 160 volts each or 160 you know four times 160 so in theory um, now the really cool thing about these boards is that they have a uh, right here it's a little buck converter that converts from whatever you're feeding them down to 12 right because it needs that for the fan so there's a 12 volt fan also these fans have a temperature sensor so they actually don't turn on until they're necessary which is great so mostly they're off now what's cool is you can tap into that and you can rip off the 12 volts so i use it I, I take 12 volts out of that buck converter and use it to run this thing you could probably run it off whatever but it's nice to do that and then on this one, what I've done is I've done the same thing, but essentially, but instead of taking it from the buck converter, which is always out between 12 volts, I've taken it from the fan control. So basically, this is a parallel fan on this one, which goes up and runs the fan inside there. So whenever the fan on this turns on, it also turns on that fan as well. The logic being, it all gets hot, so it's all good. In practice, it just didn't even turn on, because um, it's crazy efficient. And that's kind of it, really. Um, I think it took like an hour to make. It's not made very well, but it survived the whole thing. Um, if you did it carefully, you might have room to put an iPad or something in here as well, but I, I just basically cut a little notch in the case here, had the cables coming out, and then had a separate box which had the iPad or whatever in, you know. Um, so the entire sound system was basically power plus amp plus another box which was just mostly empty but had the iPad. Um, and as you see, I mean, it was sitting out on the plier all the time, it worked fine. Um, should work fine next year as well, not much dust got in. Um, it does have a rubber gasket around here. I mean, I wasn't super careful with it, but you can see that it basically, you know, it could sit in a dust storm and it'd be fine. The HEPA air filter is a very good idea. Um, and that's kind of it, really. I mean, you can drive anything you want off these, or whatever speakers you have, you could hook up, and I'm sure it would do just fine. Um, so that's my... Oh, I have another thing as well. I have another, yet another one of these that has a buck converter that goes from the battery voltage, like 15 volts, down to, down to a flat 12, so I can run anything... I can, like, put in a... Uh, car cigarette light adapter and people can plug in 12 volt anything basically but you know like because in some cases like some things don't care some things do care like if you're running led strips you don't want to run them off 15 volts because they freak out well they just fry and uh, there you go charge is in about i don't know hour and a half or something you can do two at the same time crazy good okay a couple more things this is the uh, i showed you the power and the amp this is just a buck converter and general storage so there's almost nothing in here but there's a 10 amp buck converter that you can just change the voltage on if you want to, but I either have it at 5 or 12. Uh, 12 generally, and then this comes out to bananas. You can put any 12 volts on there basically, up to like 10 amps. So, you know, cigarette lighter adapter, anything on the plug in, LEDs, all that stuff. And it's mostly the space inside. Um, you can, and the nice thing is the buck converter will, again, XT90, will run off anything at all, and of course, fuse. <laughs> of course, fuse. Um, we'll run off anything at all, so basically I have this 6S cell kicking around from something which is, you know, a shitload of amp hours, 6S at 10 amp hours. You can just drop that in there, have room for more stuff, and it's basically, you know, arbitrary amount of 12 volts. It goes on forever. Um, it doesn't have undervolted cutoff, which I need to add, because that's bad. Um, this is a, by the way, this is a YDS812 buck, which is a Japanese company that makes these. They're really good. Um, they're all PCB pools. You can still find them on eBay. They're like 3 bucks, 4 bucks. 10 amps basically, no problem at any voltage you want, you can easily mod them. Uh, very good, synchronous back converters. Alright, so this is another good thing, this is another amp, so I showed you this amp, which is the, this is 160 watt times 4, with a EQ and crossover. This is a simpler thing, which is just, which is the Snoko Nioki, which is a smaller mobile thing. So this is a, some random box I'm kicking around. Um, I don't recommend using these particularly, like, these are better, but, you know, whatever, it's all I had at the time. Um, so you've just got left and right pair, and then you've got a single bass, one of these unused. And this is, uh, like, main volume, bass, you know, whatever the hell. It, it doesn't really have an EQ, it just has, a, you know, two separate volumes and a, and a master volume. And there's a little on-off there. Um, this is an external fan that sucks and then comes out there. That's basically all there is to it on the outside. So this is normally, again, as you see out on the player. And then inside, we've got fan on here, a uh, buck converter for the fan, just so I can change the fan speed. It doesn't, it doesn't switch on or off automatically, it's just always on, which is kind of dumb, but you know, that's how it currently is. I mean, I always, you know, I mean, get around to making it better. Um, the chicken wire is here to, so that you can lay stuff on top. You can leave like an iPad or something in there inside and just shut it completely. Um, so there's plenty of like, you know, there's like a, what, like a inch and a half or something that, of space here. 
and everything can just sit on here. Fan goes through, blows on this, blows on the heatsink. This is a TDA3116 D2 or something, which is like, so this is two TI amp chips under here. Um, it's basically doing one bridge tide load sub at like 100 watts and then left and right. Um, so it takes, it has an onboard um, filtering for the sub. So basically, you know, in the, in the, it's got preamp and a filter basically, but you can't adjust it, it's kind of dumb. I mean, this, the other thing is, this is way preferable and it's only 20 bucks, but you know, this is a space thing. So we've got, again, we've got a back converter for five volts plus charging for anything you want. So you can, that can go up to the top and then you can have your thing charging while you're using it. Um, in this case, I've got a 6S, whatever it is, five amp power in there, which goes for a long time. Um, so the whole point of this is it's completely self-contained and small. Um, unplugged right now. You can leave it zip tied in there and just like pull the wires out and charge it if you need to. So that goes to, so this is 24 volts normally when it's fully charged. Again, fuse, got to have a fuse. Um, and this just goes straight to this. And so this is basically maximum 24 volts, which is all good. Then you've got a buck in here, which is doing five volts. And then you've got this thing, which I got, which is like five bucks or 10 bucks something, which is a little like, I don't know, you see what it is. It plays MP3s off USB, off SD card. Uh, it's also a Bluetooth audio endpoint, which is very handy. And it's got, you know, basic playback. So you can have an SD card in here loaded with like tunes in case of emergency, like I have it, you know, Marvin Gaye and stuff. And so whenever you power this thing up, you can basically play Marvin Gaye out the box and just close it and you're good. <laughs> which works for me um, but you know you can stick an arbitrarily large SD card in there it's not super this thing is not great for playing in, you know it's a horrible interface but whatever it all but it very handily of course it does Bluetooth so you can Bluetooth to this you can sit nearby and play play off your phone directly um, or of course you can plug in the front and through this little notch you can go up to the top layer where you have your iPad or whatever iPod you know blah um, that's about it really it's not much to this one it's pretty good uh, it's not as loud as that one, but it's, you know, it's very compact. And given that you can have everything you need to make, make quite a bit of sound in that size thing, and it's autonomous and has Bluetooth, it doesn't suck. There you go.